Assalamualaikum dan good morning to all of you. So for this week, uh, kita dah nak masuk chapter 4. So chapter 4 ni, kita nak tengok who are the key actors, institution and also what are their roles in sustainable development lah. So at the end of this topic, uh, you be able to identify who are the key actors in the sustainable development arena and last but not least, you able to discuss what are the roles of these key actors in sustainable development. So, first of all, kita kena tahulah apa itu key actors. So, basically, key actors ni dalam bahasa mudah dia, kita kata ia merupakan uh, satu entiti ataupun dia boleh juga uh, dirujuk sebagai satu organisasi that are directly involved in sustainable development lah. So, actor can be defined as individual or collective people as participant in purposive actions in an attempt to prevent or generate change. So, in sustainable development, uh, kita katakan actor ni adalah uh, satu badan lah, satu badan yang uh, akan bertindak secara uh, secara directly in sustainable development in order to generate change. So, actors of sustainable development is the people and also the institution that can promote sustainable development. So, untuk topik ni, dia akan membantu you all semua uh, untuk buat assignment kita lah. Parti 6 entiti uh, has been identified in promoting sustainable development. So, you ingat sahaja IGP NIC. Uh, IGP ni itu adalah akronim lah So kalau dalam exam keluar Dia minta explain any five of uh, actors in sustainable development So you hanya ingat huruf I, G, P and I, C IGP ni So kita akan go through one by one So I, I is stand for international bodies and also organization So ini adalah key actor yang pertama Ataupun kita kata Um, um, entity yang pertama lah Yang promote sustainable development So dekat sini tengok slide tu Dia dah ada logo PBB Persatuan Bangsa-Bangsa Bersatu Ataupun dalam bahasa Inggeris dia Kita ada United Nation So among the most uh, important actor That have to be reminded Are United Nation And also European Union Which are supporting and also promoting sustainable development. So, important document and step regarding sustainable development at international level are the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So, ini kita dah sentuh dekat dalam chapter 1. So, kita pun ada... Uh, selain daripada itu kita ada blueprint seperti sustainable development goals and also kita ada program and strategy seperti Europe 2020 ini adalah untuk European Union lah kesatuan bangsa-bangsa uh, Eropah and also untuk seluruh negara kita ada agenda 21 so apa fungsi Uh, United Nations ni So dia ada 5 fungsi So fungsi yang pertama iaitu Knowledge and data gathering So it can be explained as The availability and also uses of the information In the country members So for example macam Contoh uh, negara-negara uh, yang sedang membangun eh, Developing countries Uh, memerlukan teknologi transfer. Therefore, uh, the, av- the availability and also the uses of information uh, throughout the data gathering is very important. Uh, so that United Nations can address uh, address a good program, a good strategy for this developing country in technology transfer. So itu kita katakan dengan knowledge and data gathering punya function. Fungsi yang kedua, fungsi United Nations dalam aspek supporting intergovernmental decision making. Uh, it can be explained as implementation of the Agenda 21 lah. Sebagai contoh, Agenda 21. Implementasi Agenda 21. So, in order for uh, every member state to achieve sustainable development, it requires the international and uh, international cooperation, kerjasama dalam peringkat antarabangsa dan juga action eh tindakan 
pelan tindakan yang compatible dengan national priorities. Takkanlah dia nak buat satu uh, sesuatu program tu tanpa ambil uh, ambil kira tentang um, priority dalam sesebuah negara. Uh, so itu kita kata dengan supporting intergovernmental decision making. So, fungsi yang ketiga dari aspek coordinating finance, keuangan. So, uh, it can be explained as uh, United Nations identify the importance of having adequate financial resources. Maksudnya, uh, UN perlu uh, perlu tahu, eh, perlu tahu sama ada uh, financial resources sesebuah negara itu mencukupi ataupun tidak. So, therefore... IMF, International Monetary Fund, Sustainability Analysis can be used. Ataupun kita katakan United Nations menggunakan IMF, International Monetary Fund punya Sustainable Analysis untuk menentukan sama ada this member state having this adequate financial resources or not. So in order for a country, for a state, to develop a sustainable development first of all they need to identify if the if that state ataupun if that country has a sufficient financial resources ataupun kita kata sumber keuangan yang kukuh yang mencukupi so role yang nombor 4 iaitu implement programs on the ground so it can, it can be explained as implementing the best practices that relates to the sustainable development strategies And last but not least, United Nations role in terms of catalytic role on sustainable development. So, catalytic ni kita katakan engagement. Uh, engagement. Uh, catalytic ni macam kita kata macam uh, battery power lah. Uh, so, dalam untuk uh, role yang kelima ni, basically dia nak ceritakan tentang engagement United Nations in terms of Uh, policy role dekat semua member state uh, state, state member so dulu uh, dulu eh dulu uh, United Nation ni nak promoting sustainable development ni hanya dalam peringkat antara bangsa sahaja but not now so sekarang ni kita nak katakan uh, in order to successful implement the 2030 agenda of sustainable development Uh, Secretary General United Nations eh, Bang Kin Moon sendiri kata Kita perlu bergerak daripada Komitmen jadi uh, Action. So maksudnya you bukan Just commit bercakap je tapi you Ambil tindakan So tindakan yang macam mana So tindakan yang United Nations Perlu review the global Partnership. Perlu buat engagement Dengan member state ni Dengan semua negara 192 Negara ini and then uh, Dia buka engage dari Level antara United Nations Dengan kerajaan negara tapi uh, United Nations perlu Engage, perlu involve dalam Peringkat private sector Dalam peringkat civil society Rakyat tu sendiri dari peringkat akademik sebab itulah kita belajar apa itu sustainable development. Ha, so, itu kita katakan dengan United Nations role in terms of catalytic role. Kita nak katakan United Nations ni memainkan peranan dari segi, uh, dari sudut engagement in terms of policy role. Dia memainkan peranan uh, sebagai, orang kata apa, sebagai engager lah. Ha. So moving on kita nak tengok key actors yang kedua iaitu government ataupun kita kata public sector. So the public sector is the part of the economy which provides the basic government services. So it is characterized by the public service which are offered by the government. So the role of government is so important because the services it offers have a direct impact on the environment since the government is uh, the policy maker in the country. So, among the services offered by the government are energy related services such as macam electricity, gas and oil, education, environmental protection, law enforcement, transportation, housing, planning, waste management and also water related services. So, ini ini dikatakan uh, kerajaan memainkan peranan yang sangat besar lah dalam sustainable development dan dia merupakan uh, key actor yang kedua dalam Uh, mempromosikan sustainable development. 
So eh, for uh, so for example eh, macam dekat Malaysia kan, dekat Malaysia. Starting tahun 1970, kita barulah mempromosikan sustainable development melalui dasar ekonomi baru ataupun kita panggil dia new economic policy. So itu adalah first step Malaysia dalam menuju ke arah sustainable development. And then start daripada 2009 Kita dah naik taraf dah kita punya Sustainable development Kita jadi new economic model Tapi new economic model ni Hanya dipraktiskan sampai tahun 2020 sahaja So untuk in order for us To achieve the agenda 2030 Malaysia government Should come out with a new uh, Model Ataupun new policy on promoting Sustainable development This is because uh, Malaysia punya misi Adalah kita nak Ke arah green growth uh, Kita nak kita nak ada That green economy tu So that's why Government are the second actors That very important In playing role in promoting Sustainable development So uh, other than that uh, Contoh eh public sector yang related Dengan Uh, sustain, promoting sustainable development adalah contohnya jabatan kebajikan masyarakat. So jabatan kebajikan masyarakat ni you boleh propose dalam you punya assignment. So basically jabatan kebajikan masyarakat ni apa fungsi dia dalam mempromosikan sustainable development. So yang tu yang, yang tu you boleh go through dekat official website jabatan kebajikan masyarakat. So next moving on kita nak tengok a uh, key actor yang ketiga iaitu private sector. So tadi kita dah tengok a uh, kerajaan sekarang, ataupun kita kata sektor awam sekarang kita nak tengok sektor swasta. So both small companies and also international corporations are nowadays engaged to commit sustainable development. So their importance to promoting and also implementing sustainable development is very important for both small and uh, small firms and also international players. So one of the good example of promoting sustainable development adalah IKEA. Kalau you tengok pergi IKEA kan, IKEA adalah produk daripada Sweden. So kalau you tengok IKEA punya produk, dia punya design very eco-friendly and then very minimalist. So they are offered as an example as uh, International Institute for Sustainable Development for actively fight against uh, child labor, minimizing the impact on environment, providing a transparency policy to the customer and for actively collaborate with uh, any organization organization such as Greenpeace and UNICEF. So untuk private sector contoh macam dalam Malaysia eh, even Samsung Malaysia promote sustainable development. Uh, so yang tu you boleh go through, you boleh browse dekat mana-mana official website uh, private company yang promoting sustainable development. So basically untuk private sector ni, kalau kita nak tengok dia punya sustainable development uh, punya, orang kata apa, punya program saya, you boleh tengok through dia punya uh, CSR program lah. So basically contoh macam uh, previous chapter, dalam chapter 3 saya ada cerita pasal uh, Panasonic kan, Panasonic Malaysia eh, Panasonic Malaysia. Uh, they 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 always have this uh, Memang dia selalu ada Orang kata apa Anjurkan program Yang betul-betul related dengan Sustainable development Which is seiring dengan produk Keluaran daripada Panasonic Contohnya macam peti ais dia uh, Dia punya mesin, apa Washing machine dia Semua pakai teknologi Yang orang kata apa Yang mengurangkan tenaga elektrik Mengurangkan pe, apa uh, Mengurangkan penggunaan air So benda-benda tu Sangat related dengan Promoting sustainable development Next, kita nak tengok key actors yang keempat iaitu NGO, badan-badan, uh, badan-badan bukan kerajaan lah. So, apa itu NGO? So, uh, NGO are the non-governmental organisation that includes private voluntary organisation, civil society organisation ataupun kita kata non-profit organisation. So, among the ways where they gain the international attention, was organizing a large scale protest. So for example macam uh, NGO nama Greenpeace. So basically Greenpeace ni uh, mereka uh, cara mereka orang kata apa uh, nak bagi eh nak gain attention from the government to take action 
upon the sustainable development so they will go for protest tapi Greenpeace ni tak kuat lah dekat Malaysia Malaysia tak kuat sangat lah basically ni dekat Europe countries dia Greenpeace ni sangat aktif and then dia akan lobbying and also dia adalah dia punya direct action macam campaigning and then go house to house untuk dapatkan tanda tangan and so on and so forth so for example NGO yang kita boleh tengok eh, dalam Malaysia yang actively participate in sustainable development contohnya macam Mercy Malaysia macam kita ada WWF Malaysia and then kita ada UNESCO Malaysia so itu adalah antara badan-badan NGO yang mainkan peranan in promoting sustainable development Oh, kita nak tengok key actors yang kelima iaitu interest group ataupun kita kata peer pressure group lah. Ini antara emang-emang uh, orang kata apa pejuang-pejuang uh, sustainable development. So untuk sustainable development goal kita pun tahu dia ada 17 goal betul tak? So setiap goal tu dia ada dia punya uh, peer Peer, peer pressure group ataupun interest group masing-masing lah. Tak semua tak semua orang memperjuangkan tentang apa uh, hak hidupan liar betul tak? Contohnya misal kata macam hidupan li, uh, hidupan terancam spesies terancam uh, badan NGO uh, yang yang betul-betul memperjuangkan tentang uh, wildlife adalah WWF Malaysia seperti contoh. So setiap badan tu dia ada dia punya own uh, sustainable development goal yang tersendiri. So, while there have been considerable effort by the government, so for example, macam uh, European Union dengan United Nations implement measures that will reduce harmful fuel emissions. Sebab dekat sana, dia orang punya concern adalah tentang uh, apa tu, uh, gas emission. So, Uh, so uh, because this gas emission can bring harm to the climate change So many people believe that not enough is being done So again pressure group such as Greenpeace and then Friends of the Earth Macam dekat sana lah dekat Europe Actively aim to persuade the government around the world to develop workable environmental policy Maksudnya uh, green lah green policy So misal kata dekat Malaysia kita ada uh, seperti contoh kita ada My Kasih kita ada Yayasan Hasanah. So, pressure group seek to affect the government policy without any intention of gaining power themselves. Dia bukan nak power. Dia hanya nak uh, nak desak government untuk create satu policy ke arah green, orang kata apa, green policy. Contohnya macam terlalu banyak penggunaan uh, kenderaan di atas jalan raya. So, bila ada banyak kenderaan atas jalan raya, ia boleh apa? Boleh mengancam climate change sebab disebabkan pelepasan gas-gas gas-gas dekat uh, dekat uh, dekat atas kan uh, so benda tu mendatangkan mudarat lah kepada penduduk ataupun rakyat dekat sesebuah kawasan so this achievely uh, by the promotion of specific issues both at the grassroots level through education of the public and then directly lobbying the government So Greenpeace eh have a permanent employees used in parliament central lobby ready to engage with the member of parliament over a range of environmental issues. So pressure groups used as a range of direct and also indirect action in promoting sustainable development policy. So ini dekat Europe lah. So dekat dalam Malaysia ni for example macam kita punya uh, problem adalah never ending problem online us and then yang paling uh, update adalah up to date adalah our men- Menteri Alam Sekitar kata uh, kita punya climate change masih boleh dikawal. Meanwhile, uh, he still uh, as uh, we eh, Malaysia still accepting uh, kata apa recycle ataupun use uh, waste. Uh, rubbish kan sampah-sampah daripada negara luar dibawa masuk ke dalam Malaysia tujuan untuk pelupusan so saya tak tahulah uh, apa apa fungsi uh, Menteri Alam Sekitar dan Sains dan Teknologi di Malaysia So, last but not least, uh, key actors for promoting sustainable development adalah the people, kita, civil society. So, according to the World Bank, the kata civil society refers to a wide array of organisation, community groups, non-governmental organisation, labour unions, indigenous group, charitable organisation, faith-based organisation, professional association and also foundation. So, basically, apa yang World Bank nak kata ni, tak kisahlah you daripada mana-mana organisasi, you adalah civil society. 
So civil society play an active role throughout this process. So civil society are the stakeholders. Kita 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 kata kita stakeholder lah sebab kita adalah the one who are being put at the risk that participate in sessions of the intergovernmental negotiations and the open working group provided input to the governments ahead and during discussion. So, civil society has been fed into discussion through participating in consultation that has been organized by the United Nations, government and also other stakeholders and then engage in the advocacy outside of formal setting to influence the government's position. That's why lah kita ada badan-badan NGO, kita ada that interest group untuk untuk apa? Untuk highlightkan isu tentang sustainable, uh, promoting sustainable development. So, to coordinate their effort and strengthen the impact of the advocacy. So, the civil society organization work in coalition across the sector and across the country as well as the region. So, mungkin dalam Malaysia, daripada apa? Daripada level Malaysia, jadi ke level ASEAN, jadi ke member uh, summit, summit member. So, itu kita katakan dengan rule of civil society. So, pergi mana-mana pun civil society ni memainkan peranan penting dalam mempromosikan ataupun dalam menghighlightkan isu-isu yang berkaitan dengan sustainable development sebab contoh penggunaan air penggunaan elektrik um, maka apa bahan mentah semuanya sangat closely related to the people. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you so much. I hope we can do some discussion after this recorded lecture.